or who am I? Uh, my name's Clayton Parker. I work at Six Feet Up. Um, I've been doing Plone since, uh, I don't know, 2003, I guess, the first Plone conference. Um, I think I know most of the people in the room, so it shouldn't take too much explanation. Um, we've, uh, I've been working on this site for a while, um, and uh, if you're looking for me on the internet, uh, you all know me as Claytron. So, um, what is this talk about? Um, it starts with the uh, University of Notre Dame um, in Indiana and their College of Engineering. They had uh, many different uh, departments within that college um, that all had different sites and then also uh, many different um, institutes and centers and all kinds of uh, little smaller sites uh, that were all um, hosted elsewhere. Um, then on top of that, we have things like MySpace. Well, I don't know if anyone actually uses MySpace anymore. But Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Google+, all these other places where, where content lives. And what they're ending up with was uh, frustrated users um, that just don't know where to go to find the content. And they may not be sure they're, they're on, they're, they've found the right content they're looking for. Um, so some of the issues they uh, ran into or were running into um, one of the biggest ones was a lack of consistent branding across all their different sites. So here we have uh, the Advanced uh, Diagnostics and Therapeutics uh, site, uh, which looks nothing like the Environmental Science and Technology site. Um, and then other sites uh, like the, uh, this one here that sort of looks branded like, like the university. And then uh, even other sites that have uh, nothing that stands out to you that looks like it came from the University of Notre Dame. So the biggest problem, one of the big problems they were having is just this complete lack of consistent uh, design across all the different sites. Another uh, big roadblock for them is they have uh, lots of different um, uh, ways to manage content. So they have a homegrown solution uh, like the, their conductor system, so it's something they built internally uh, to be a CMS. But they also have uh, pri pri proprietary solutions uh, like Ektron, and also they have uh, open source solutions like uh, Drupal. So they have just a myriad and also Plone uh, in the mix. So they have a myriad of different ways of managing the content, and you know it's it's frustrating for the the editors of these sites because they um, they go into one system and it's completely different than another one. So. That was another uh, big issue they were trying to solve uh, with this project. Then also uh, promoting content across all the different sites. Um, you know, content is separated between all these these different sites. Um, one of the issues they had were uh, basically the, web, the webmaster, whoever became the webmaster of that particular site, uh, also became a bottleneck. So if you want to add in new content or have them promote something that you've done. Um, you'd have to go through them, and it became uh, a problem. Um, end users were also uh, exposed only to the content that's in that particular site. So if you do a search uh, for something in, in that site, if it even has a search, um, you're only going to get re uh, results back from, from that particular site. Um, and also, you know, when, a, when you have a great news item and you want to the world to know about, uh, the, the Notre Dame world to know about your uh, particular piece of news, um, they would end up going in and copy and pasting uh, the content of that into each of these sites. Um, so it, it really uh, was causing them a lot of problems and getting a lot of stale content in a lot of different places. Uh, the next problem was finding information was, was fr frustrating for the web, web visitors. So like we mentioned, you know, the content is spread out across all these different places. And when we're going to search, you're not finding the right things, uh, users will be get redirected to uh, wholly new sites that look nothing like the one before it, uh, like we saw earlier. And you know, there's just real no, no real consistency in the, the look and feel of each organization. Um, another issue was, was poor SEO. So some of these sites were uh, just handcrafted HTML. Some of them are uh, content management systems. Some of them uh, maybe a blog turned into a, a website. So not all these, these different formats uh, really uh, have the right uh, SEO 
um, tools involved. So with Plone, uh, right out of the box, we get we get pretty good SEO. Um, you know, there's add-ons to improve it even more, um, but it in turn gives them more visibility in search engines. Um, they're not fighting with the other uh, little little sites um, to to get uh, visibility in search engines. Um, and some you know some of those systems may not be uh, up to par on on the latest uh, SEO techniques. And just having clean content that you know search engines and other things can can find you with. So, in the uh, first phase, uh, there were two phases to this project. Um, in the first phase, we we just started with with Plone. Um, so we had an advocate within the university that um, was was already using Plone. Um, they wanted a new website, and they didn't want to uh, have to pay for their little center. Uh, to get to get a, a full blown website, uh, a Plone site, so they started convincing the, the their college to to go in and make a site that all of them can use. Um, so with Plone, and then um, on top of that, we use uh, Lineage um, to to do subsites within one Plone instance. So this enables them to have all the de all the different departments and centers and all these things living within one Plone site. Um, and then uh, making their lives uh, a lot easier. So here we'll see a, a demo. So here we're at the College of Engineering. Um, we can see if we uh, hover over the departments, we have a list of departments here. Um, then if we uh, log in, so we'll just log in as a, a staff, staff user. Uh, so this is basically a site administrator. Then we go to the contents view here. And we can see this is just stock clone. Um, we go to the departments uh, folder, uh, and here we are in the departments. Then inside of here, there's just more. Um, these these are where the departments actually live. Um, so if we want to add a new department, we just go add new item, uh, select a department, which is a custom content type. So this is a dexterity type that um, is lineage aware. Um, so we we create our new department. Uh, it's a great program. Um, then uh, we scroll down and we see you know, just normal Plone inter uh, edit interface. They also have a couple uh, custom fields that they needed uh, for each of their departments to, to give a logo and uh, add a little uh, custom look and feel. And then once we save that, uh, we've created a new department. Now we have some uh, content automatically created for us. It's basically just folders uh, to, to house you know, news and events. Uh, if you click on news, it's not all that exciting right now. There's just an empty news folder. Um, then uh, once we go back to the, the home page of that department, we can see um, there's some portlets set up, um, and there's some, there's some slideshows and things. But since it's, there's no, nothing filled out yet, uh, it just looks blank right now. Then if we go back up to the college en engineering, we can see that our department now uh, shows up in the dropdown. Um, and you saw that the, the department was actually created and it's private. So um, the, the content editors will go in, uh, create the content, get it all ready for, um, for, the, for the world to see, and then uh, publish it. And then uh, everyone can find it there on the, on the College of Engineering site. Um, so with phase one, uh, one of the biggest things for them was uh, having centralized user management uh, for, for administrators. Um, they, you know, this site has uh, site members who uh, declare an aff affiliation to an organization. So, if I sign up as a, a student or a faculty member, I say I'm part of this department and this center. Um, that gives you some extra um, permissions and different things within the site. Uh, once you do that, and we also have students who are helping faculty enter content because um, the faculty are busy. And students are eager, so they're they're willing to help out. Um, go get you know a piece of content ready for a faculty member, and and let them uh, go from there. And we also have uh, faculty members who are uh, basically competing for attention. Um, there's there's a lot of vanity uh, in universities. Uh, you know the faculty members want everyone to know how how amazing they are and how all the great things they've done uh, for the world. Um, so here we'll see another. Uh, a demonstration. We will uh, log in as an admin. 
uh, go to site setup. So this is all, again, uh, stock clone. So we have uh, users and groups um, pretty much like you would see in any clone site. Uh, we go to the groups tab, and they, they manage the, um, each of the subsites by having groups um, and different groups of users. So they have groups for all the different uh, departments. Um, and then within a the department, there are different types of people, like faculty or uh, managers, things like that. So we go to a department. And it's just a uh, dexterity uh, folder. So we go to it, and it has a sharing tab. Um, and you know, just like any time you see them clone, uh, we search for our particular group. And then we can um, give them elevated permissions here, um, just like we're used to. Um, and we can see some of these uh, groups here are getting them from, from the top level. So nothing. Nothing uh, crazy here. Uh, it's just normal uh, user management. Um, but just want to show that that's just still how it works within this system. Um, next part of phase one was to have a uh, central staff, faculty, and student directory. Um, they have a lot of people uh, in all these departments. And they, they all have profiles and portfolios. And they want to show off all their news and all their achievements and, and all these things. Um, so we uh, put together a staff, di staff directory for that. So here we're, we're an anonymous user. Uh, we also have uh, portlets that are showing off uh, faculty and students. Um, they can go in and feature uh, certain people. So they'll show up on the, on the home page here. Um, and also, if we go into a particular center, uh, so here's the Wireless Institute, we also have a faculty spotlight just for that particular um, uh, institute or center. Um, then uh, we also go here, and we'll go to the People tab. And so now we see our, our faceted navigation. So this is just EEA uh, faceted nav. Um, we can narrow down to faculty members. Uh, we see our list of faculty members. Then we can say, oh, we need to want to know about administrators. Uh, we can find those people. So can, they can find people uh, really quickly. Then um, we'll log in as an uh, administrator again. So we're logging, logging as staff. And we're going to go uh, to a particular press release. So we'll go to the press releases section, um, find a, a piece of news that um, w one of these people may have been uh, affiliated with. Uh, so we'll go to the Edit tab. And we just added a, um, related, a featured people um, field onto here. Um, so it just creates a relationship between uh, the user and this, this piece of news. Um, so here we're selecting uh, uh, Nick Laneman. Then we save. And then uh, that user will show up on the side here on this uh, particular news item. Uh, so now we can see these featured people. So these are typically people that are mentioned in this article. Um, then we go to their profile. Um, so this is where they're, they're flashing their vanity card. And we can see that news item now shows up um, on their list here on their profile along with all the other information about uh, this particular user. And we also see the, uh, their advisees uh, listed here. So uh, next step was to make it easier to uh, contribute and review content. Um, and before, they may not have even had any sort of review process. Um, so we, we just utilized the, the built-in clone workflows uh, to allow them to uh, have a better review process. Um, and also to um, prevent that, that webmaster from being the bottleneck. So we have more people affiliated with each of these departments or centers, and then they can go in and, and help as well. So here we're going to log in um, as a student. And we're going to see how a student can help a, a faculty member out. So we log in as a student. And these, these users are uh, membrane uh, ty or, um, uh, dexterity types using membrane on the back end. So I go to the edit interface for Joe's student, who looks very familiar. I, th I, think, I think I know this guy. Um, then I go uh, actually select my advisor. Uh, and this has actually been changed in the, the, the most recent version so that students can't just say, oh, I want to be 
all these people's advisors and make all kinds of content. Uh, so now the, it'll be the opposite. So now we see the advisor for this uh, particular student. Uh, also looks familiar. So Jane faculty here. Uh, and then we go to uh, Jane's profile. So we're still logged in as the student. And we're going to go create some content uh, for our faculty member. Um, so this is just basically the, uh, the home folder for the, uh, the, the faculty member. And we'll create a new, new news item here. Uh, so we'll say that the Wireless Institute uh, gets a, a $1 billion grant. Um, and then, you know, fill out the, the description and the body and, and everything so that uh, the faculty member doesn't have to do all this uh, sort of busy work uh, to get their uh, accolades out there. So we save that. And then uh, we'll actually uh, we'll log out and we'll log back in as the faculty member. So the student tells the, the faculty member that they've, they've created this new wonderful news item that uh, they really need to go uh, uh, look at, uh, revise, and uh, publish. Um, so we go to the, the new news item that was created. And um, there's, there's one problem already. Um, uh, the faculty member, I see there's a, there's a slight typo. Um, it wasn't billion dollars, it was million dollars. So um, it's good that the faculty, the faculty has a little bit of oversight on, and, on these things so that they don't accidentally publish uh, falsehoods. And then um, they can just go ahead and, and publish that item. And that makes it available to their, to their profile. Um, so that will show up um, on, their, on their, their profile. And then when you go to their portfolio, you can browse around and see what the, the faculty member has actually created. Um, the last part of the, the first phase was some rudimentary uh, syndication of content. So they just had um, a homepage with news that was just coming from all these subsites. So if you're on the College of Engineering, and you're in some little tiny uh, department or a tiny center, and you publish a news item, that would show up on the home page. Um, that's not necessarily top billing news about some, something that um, a, a very small amount of people would, would care about. Um, so um, that was just done automatically, and, and nothing really helping the, the content editors choose uh, what would show up. So at launch time in the first phase, we had um, the College of Engineering uh, moved into Plone, and we had the Department of Elect Electrical Engineering and the Wireless Institute all in uh, this new system. Um, so we're using Lineage and Plone and, and making uh, at least these three uh, uh, organizations uh, much, much happier. So now, now they have everything under one roof. They have their member profiles um, in one place. Um, they're still using um, a, uh, a directory service for, for authentication, but their actual profiles on the system uh, are now consolidated here on this site. So they were happy with, with what they had, but they wanted to improve upon the situation. Um, so they wanted to optimize how they um, were, were using the system. One of the first problems they had was uh, that manual duplication of, of content. Um, even with this system here, if they want to promote a, a piece of news or an article between sites, they still have to go either copy paste it in, inside a plone or uh, you know, sort of steal the, the content from the other place and make their own version of it. So they wanted to get rid of this duplication of content. And that's where, um, in phase two, we, we came up with a new product called uh, Resonate. So this allows us to um, share content within a, a particular plone site. Um, one of the first things we, we um, did was allow them to easily move content. So we have this content being created in a, um, a member's portfolio. And that tends to be sort of uh, like really good news, um, and it shouldn't necessarily live in the member's portfolio. Um, so they want an easy way to just say, okay, I want to I move this over to uh, another organization. So uh, first thing you do is log in 
Um, in this case, we are logging in as the faculty member, so this is the owner of the content. Then we see uh, this recent news, so there's only one news item for this uh, faculty member, and that's, that's the important piece of news we want to, uh, to move. So we just, we're using the workflow again, um, and we just request a move. Then we, we just select where we want to move it to. Um, so you just start typing the name of the, uh, the institute or the organization. Here they, we want to share this to the, or we want to move this to the wireless institute. And then once we do that, the, the news item is actually, I and mean, we also we have a syndication status, so uh, we said it's currently submitted to the, um, the Wireless Institute, because they may not actually want your news item and may actually reject it. But in this case, we're gonna show the happy ending and the, we're gonna log in as a, an administrator, so we're logging as staff. And once we're logged in, uh, we'll see on the review list We'll go to the Wireless Institute first, since that's where it's been published to. Then we see that that item's not on the news yet. Uh, we go to the review list, and we see uh, this news item, or this item here, and that they, they actually got a um, email notification once that was uh, submitted as well, so that's why they've come to the site. Then we just use the, um, the workflow again and accept the move. Then this just in the background goes and um, moves that piece of content into the, the Wireless Institute, and then sends an email to the, uh, the member that uh, requested it, and now we see that, that piece of news um, here in the Wireless Institute. And if we go back to the homepage, now that our, our piece of content's uh, got top billing here on, on the news section. And we also, we go back and that's it. On that one, maybe. Oh, so yeah. So now it's been moved, and obviously it's it's no longer here. So that's the definition of move. Um, next in the the phase two additions was uh, being able to do multi-directional uh, syndication requests. Um, so as I mentioned before, faculty members and departments can be very competitive. Uh, everyone wants their news item on the College of Engineering front page. Um, so they may get inundated with a lot of requests for uh, pushing that content up there. And before that content was all automatically showing up there, um, now they were using uh, Resonate to sort of uh, quell the storm and allow for a more uh, moderated approach to, uh, to showing off this content. So here we log in uh, again as a faculty member. Then we go to uh, this the new new news item we created. So it's been moved into here, and now we're gonna actually use the same news item and uh, request syndication. So we go in and we select um, where we want this news item to show up. So obviously we want it to show up on the homepage, um, but then we'll also pick the Department of Electri Electrical Engineering um, then once we save, uh, then this this item is now in a uh, pending syndication uh, state. So now we'll log out and log back in as an administrator. In this case, staff, but it could be a um, anyone who has the rights to to review content within that uh, particular uh, institute or organization. And now we see the in the review list, uh, we, have, we actually have two items in the review list. Um, in this case, we'll go to the College of Engineering item first, and then we'll go and use, use the uh, workflow again, and we'll actually uh, accept the syndication. So once we do that, then our, our item, the, the member again gets notified that uh, it was uh, syndicated. And then here on the Wireless Institute, um, I don't, we don't want this piece of content here, so we actually reject the syndication. And again, the member gets notified that their piece of content was, was rejected. Then if we go back to the College of Engineering here, we can see that our news item now shows up here as well. 
um, and it's, it denotes where it came from. But then if we go to the Department of Electrical Engineering, we don't see it there because it was uh, rejected. So this gives them um, a lot of power to, to have the same uh, news um, uh, shown in, in many different places and uh, allows them to, to promote that. Um, so another part of phase two was to um, give content reviewers uh, some insight into the syndication status. Um, so uh, you know, when, when this thing is moving around, they want to have a little bit more um, oversight on what, what happened to it. So here we're on, on the news item again. We go down the bottom, we have this syndication status portlet, and we can see where it's currently syndicated to, so the College of Engineering, and where it's previously been rejected from. Because um, we don't want people to just keep submitting it back again and again and again to that uh, particular department. And we can also see here in the history tab um, that it actually records all that, uh, all those those workflow uh, moves, and and shows you you know where when it was rejected, uh, when it was accepted, um, and and everything else uh, with with the history of that object. Um, so another thing that I've mentioned a few times is that the, the content reviewers also get uh, email notifications. Um, so you know this, this system wouldn't work if, if people were doing all this and no one was ever notified. So they get email notifications um, based on their, their role. So if they're a reviewer within one of these organizations, uh, then they will uh, get an email and then go to the site and uh, check it out. So uh, as of today, and. I believe this is accurate. They have uh, five departments and two institutes signed up. Um, so they've added uh, four more departments and another uh, center. Um, and I think it's, it's, been, it's been working really well for them. Uh, they, they definitely enjoy having a central place to, to manage the content, um, to have pro uh, profiles and portfolios uh, where they can share, share and uh, show off how, how awesome they are um, on, their, on their member pages. There's the photo credits for all the awesome photos, thanks to Creative Commons, which is super awesome. And that's it. So, uh, any questions? Um, so the last part of the Resonate plugin um, wasn't uh, released on Firewire or anything like that. Is there plans to do it? So, right now, Resonate is actually a, a product offering of ours. Um, so, the the lineage stuff we saw and the member, uh, the custom member type, all that's been op all obviously open source. Uh, but the resonate part, the sharing uh, uh, piece of it is a, is, a, is a product of ours. How does that work with the GPL license? How does that work with the GPL license? Um, that's a good question. I don't have a good answer for it right now. But I'll get back to you on that because that is a very important question. Uh, let's see, what is it called? I believe just yeah, dexterity about mem dot membrane, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Yes. That's a good question. So, the uh, question is about how the syndication works, and can you have um, multiple people editing the the, the source uh, item? Is that correct? Yeah. Um, so they actually can. Uh, that's one thing I didn't show off. Uh, is when when once it's syndicated, uh, it's syndicated with sort of a proxy object. And that has the title and description, and they can change, they can change, reword things a little bit um, on their side so that it fits more into where where it's been syndicated to. Um, it's just a it's a pretty simple object. Um, I, I believe it's. Uh, uh, I actually don't know what it's backed by. I would say probably dexterity, um, but it simply just pulls in you know the link. It knows how to get back to the original item. Yep. 
Yep. And then, so the, one of the other reasons for that was to, to have workflow. So once you've syndicated it to a new place, uh, you don't want it to just automatically show up. So we have the workflow to say whether it's been accepted or rejected uh, and so forth. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much.